Molo Sanbonani, hello, how's it? Good morning, good morning, good morning to this, the Thursday edition of Vuganazo here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. My name is Sikhle Ngobese, a.k.a. Big Daddy Liberty. And of course, we come to you every weekdays from 7 a.m., bringing you the news analysis that you can get only here on Vuga Nazo. Morning, welcome to it. A reminder that if you want to get in touch with us here at the show, find us on our website at www.bigdaddyliberty.com. There, of course, if you scroll to the bottom of the screen, you can also find out how you can support the show. Become a monthly contributor of 100 Rand and help us build a team around the show that can bring you compelling analysis that you will get nowhere else. Apologies for not having seen me yesterday. It was, of course, the June Jewish uh, holiday of Yom Kippur. So uh, with that being said, now that I'm back, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's get straight into the news. All right, we begin here this morning in Mpumalanga near Bush Buck Ridge where a harrowing story came out. And I'll put those images on the screen of just how chaotic the scene must have been after four German tourists who were traveling in the country, presumably happy spending money, creating jobs, and indeed boosting the local economy. That happy event cut short after three suspects who were said to have jumped out of a VW caddy, then proceeded to either a try to rob them or hijack them, pointing uh, guns at this particular vehicle. The couple, or rather the tourist group, presumably shocked, by events, tried to evade them, to which case one of them was shot and killed by the robbers who then fled the scene. A horrific, horrific incident. Indeed, a news piece by News24 did a bit of a write-up on it and said the following, giving more context. Mpumalanga police spokesperson, a brigadier, Selvi Mukhala, we've heard about her before on the show, said the man was part of, the deceased man that was, was part of a group of four that was accosted by armed men in the said vehicle. He said the tourists were traveling in a Hyundai um, a vehicle, I believe it's one of those new ones, not an H1, as erroneously reported here, on Numbi Road in White River. And they were en route to the Numbi Gate at Mjuli Safari Lodge when they were attacked. Obviously, as mentioned, uh, the driver uh, locked the vehicles trying to evade these hijackers and was shot in the upper body through the window, end of quote. Again, I'll be very brief in my analysis here because for me, it's, it's just, it's so sad, this entire incident where there are so many affected parties by the actions of three cruel monsters, three cruel individuals who had no business being uh, where they were robbing these individuals, no business taking the lives of another human being and in the process have now robbed not only this particular party and their families of a family member, a friend, or whatever the case may be, but have literally robbed the country of potentially these four individuals who, you know, especially for the tourism sector, which is only beginning to recover from that lockdown period and the spicy cough, uh, are now beginning to, to welcome foreign tourists back into the country. And this is what we're doing to those foreign tourists? This is what happens when you live in a failed state where the police and effectively the state is not playing its critical role of maintaining law and order. Where in this country, as I mentioned on social media, it is the criminals and the criminally in intent who live much freer, much bolder lives where they can do as they please in this South Africa versus us, the law-abiding faith, flag, family and freedom type citizenry who are basically prisoners in our own country. You see that in incidents like these. So good luck to tourism in Mpumalanga, especially when this news wafts back to the Germans. And I would hope the German uh, ambassador here, or the ambassador from Germany to South Africa, will have harsh words for the South African government, including that asshat of a police minister. Because with these sort of incidents, tourism is surely going to suffer. All right, as I now take you to Cape Town, where the Africa Oil Week conference was held, where uh, South Africa was represented, of course, by the Mineral Resources and Energy Minister, Ewan Gwede Mandashi. Yes, that chap, lol. <laughs> but um, 
I must say, unaccustomed as I am to agreeing with anybody from this ANC government, indeed even Ukwete Mantashe, I must say he's right insofar as the remarks he made at this conference. Speaking, of course, to this conference, Mantashe made the critical point of the need for Africa to develop its own pathway um, using, yes, coal, gas, and all of these energy sources, oil, that are naturally abundant here in Africa. The very same energy sources, by the way, which Western countries, preachy as they are now with their green lobby, are telling the developing world to abandon. The very same energy sources which those very same developed countries became fabulously rich, exploiting in order to raise their living standards, which, by the way, it's those living standards which now give them the luxury to be able to have these green lobbies that demand the rest of us to abandon oil, gas, or indeed coal. I would, therefore, as I've mentioned, stand firmly in support of Ukwede Mantashi, who says, actually, Africa should chart its own pathway from detransitioning from this energy source to much cleaner energy sources. And indeed, he even called out the hypocrisy of these nations. Um, I want to read you a quote in News 24, where he said, quote, we've seen the increase in coal purchasing from us to the EU, that's the European Union, growing eightfold, that's by 780% as they take our coal, they at the same time tell us to move out of it quickly. Now, that is a con contradiction that Africa must look at, and Gwena Mantashe saying that is absolutely right. He goes on to mention that Africa must determine its pathway from a high carbon emissions to low carbon emissions, and it must take into account developmental needs and must not be dictated to by anybody else who's at a different level of development. We must talk to one another as a continent. I absolutely agree with that end of quote. Now, by the way, and goodness me, I'm about to uh, agree with him twice. Now, he's absolutely right on this latter point insofar as warning against the coercion, whether it's a dangled carrot that comes with the stick behind it, or even that these European and Western countries often do, for instance, the dangling of a 8.5 billion rand green deal, uh, or that's 150 billion rand green deal that is being pushed towards the South African government by um, the Western countries at the moment, or um, as is, was happening ironically outside that very same conference, the, the green hippies, the, the activists who often destroy things, disrupt, do all sorts of things in the name of uh, their protests for their lobby, the green lobby. Um, Greta Thunberg, I'm looking at you, girl. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> albeit she wasn't there. But the point I'm making is often these green hippie uh, types who come and protest and make all sorts of demands that are really divorced from the reality of how people live in developed countries. Of course, as I conclude my thoughts, I'll say this. And I know there'll be many of you who disagree with me, but that's fine. Disagreement is okay. I want a South Africa that transitions away from coal, oil, and the like, not because of the uh, carbon emissions necessarily, but because the air quality, the pollution that it wreaks upon neighborhoods in Africa, in Africa, or in this case, in South Africa, is really heavy. Travel anywhere in the country where there are coal-burning power plants by ESCOM, who basically uses about, uh, who generate 95% of our electricity from these coal-burning power plants. Travel to anywhere in that part of the world where there's refineries, for example, like Secunda and that part of the world. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I talk about the pressing issue really being the air quality and not necessarily the carbon, as the green lobby would have us believe. So that there is actually agreement to detransition from coal and these more and oil to, uh, that are more dirtier. But what I would like to see is a much more rational take where we move towards actually nuclear which is a much cleaner way to produce the sort of megawattage of energy we, we, we need. And of course, natural gas, which there is an abundance of in this part of the world. What do you think about that? Maybe you disagree. Maybe you're a green hippie who's frothing at the mouth now. How dare you, Big Daddy, say that we, <laughs> we should ignore all of the green stuff that we're pushing? Whatever. You let me know what you think about this topic, and I'm sure we can have a rational and calm debate in the comment section. All right, folks, we will end that one here. As I can hear, the green hippies already f typing away furiously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, direct your anger and uh, your scorn for my um, 
for my views at our website at www.bigdaddyliberty.com. That's where, of course, you'll find us. Remember, of course, you can also find us on social media, uh, depending on where you're watching. Uh, it's either up here, the information, or down there, the information of how you can find us on social media. And hey, if you're watching this on YouTube in particular, do me a solid favor, hit that subscribe button and of course the bell notification so that every weekday from 7 a.m. you'll be notified when Vuganazo is on your screen. Have a happy, happy Thursday and I'll see you tomorrow.